Alright, what's up people and welcome to this new discography ranking. Today we are ranking the death metal supergroup themselves, Bloodbath. That's something I'm very, very happy to be saying in the start of this video. Bloodbath is a band that I discovered in the rows of 2020 lockdown and in the last two and a half years since discovering them they have quickly risen to being one of if my absolute favourite band of all time at this point. They're definitely top three. It's too early to say whether they are my absolute favourite, but they are so fucking close, man. I love them to bits, and we are ranking them today. All six studio albums, and their two EPs. A sigh of relief has happened amongst all of the Bloodbath super fans that are watching this video. Usually I don't rank the EPs with bands, but I feel like Bloodbath should be the only exception to that rule when it comes to my discography rankings just because their two EPs are pretty much on the same level of greatness as the rest of their studio albums are. Also, it's all killer no filler. Every single album Bloodbath has put out has been stellar. I, there isn't an album that they've made that I haven't enjoyed. If your favourite album of their discography gets ranked last place, which it might for a few people watching, just know that there isn't anything they've put out in their discography, whether it be the two EPs they've done or any of the six studio albums they've done that I haven't enjoyed. So. Yeah, um, we're just gonna go in and rank all of their albums. Once again, I'm sorry, this is an opinion warning. If you don't like other people's opinions on your favorite band, then you're, you're watching the wrong video because this is full of my opinion. But at the last place, this hurts me, but it's Breeding Death, their first EP. I know I said the EPs are on the same level of the full length albums, and this one is. It was such a close toss up between this one and the next one that I rank, but Breeding Death came last for one of the main reasons being that it's only three songs. And yes, I know those three songs in this EP are amazing, but two of these three EPs end up on the back end as demos of Nightmares Made Flesh. So I feel like this album, time has not aged it as well as it possibly should have or could have. Let's go through and talk about stuff that I liked. The title track, Breeding Death, has a really fast riff that slows down to be more slow and chuggy. I really like that song. Ominous Blood Vomit as well. First of all, amazing title. But two, it's just bullet train aggression. Great song, that one. And then Furnace Funeral has a cool groovy riff in it that speeds up into a high tempo action fest. You know what I mean? Really good song, that one as well. And though this EP does sound very, very unique, most of the albums that Bloodbath has done has a very, very unique sound to them. No, not one Bloodbath album sounds the same, and that's the same for their EPs. My only criticism of Breeding Death is I wish it was longer. Anyway, second to last place, we have Resurrection Through Carnage. Yeah, I know, I'm really sorry for ranking the early Bloodbath quite low. That, that This trend will cease after this one here, but let's talk about what's great about Resurrection Through Carnage first, because this album is amazing, much like the rest of their discography is. The production on this album sounds a lot less polished, which I believe is intentional and makes it sound more gritty and just visceral, which I really enjoy. Definitely fits for some really good Swedish death metal tones. The vocals also match that sort of grisly tone with just being ferocious and just aggressive. So like I say, the, the rough and raw production really does match the vocals and everything else that was going on with all of the instruments that they input into making this album. Ways to the Grave and So You Die are just explosive songs and starting off the album with those two tracks is the perfect choice for this album. Death Delirium has a creepy tone as well. I like that song. Soul Collector is Undoubtedly my favourite on this album. Soul Collector is one that I always come back to and listen on this album. It is a personal favourite of mine. Trail of Insects just has full pelt aggression with a really cool downtrodden riff. And the atmosphere building towards the end of that song is fucking stellar, dude. I love that one. Cry My Name, though it is a slightly weaker end to the album than I was hoping for, still has a really groovy riff and a really cool tone to it. But yeah, overall, um, Resurrection Through Carnage, gets an 8 out of 10 for me. It is excellent stuff and like I say, even the back half of their catalogue that I enjoy less than the top half still hits it out of the park and end up being great records, which just shows how grossly consistent Bloodbath is as a band. Alright, in at number 6 on the list we have Grand Morbid Funeral. Now, though this is usually regarded as most people's least favourite Bloodbath album, 
It's not mine, shocker for a start, if you've been paying attention, but also, even though it's considered the weakest of the band's discog, it is still such a solid album, you know? This album seems to have the most experimentation of any of Bloodbath's albums. They really do push out the boat a lot more, which is probably why I like it more than most, and it might be why some of the loyal uh, Bloodbath fans from years gone by probably like this one less because it deviates from their sound a bit too much for their liking, which is fair enough, you know. One criticism I do have is that Nick Holmes, as the new vocalist at this time of recording this album, definitely doesn't feel like he's settled in as much as he probably should have before writing an album with the band. It feels like he's going for this sort of... The, the clean vocals don't really fit what they're going for in the album. I, I like the approach, but I definitely enjoy Nick Holmes when he's doing more of those ferocious death growls that he does in the next albums that he does with Blood Buff after this one. But let's go through some of the tracks. Let the Stillborn Come To Me is such an evil sounding song. One of my favourites on the album as well. The songs Total Death Exhumed and Anne, or Ain, just have some elements of speed metal and just ferocity that is unmatched really. Definitely full pelt. The Famine of God's Word sounds so unsettling and evil as well. What a good track that one is. Might be my single favourite on the album if it's not Let the Stillborn Come to Me. Mental Abortion is just full speed ferocity. Same with Unite in Pain as well. Another good track. See, every album they've done is just full of bangers, man. What did I tell you? My Torturer is fast paced and aggressive as well. And then the title track, Grand Morbid Funeral, is just so creepy. It's just a monstrous, deliberate, just gut punch of a song. It's also so atmospheric and is definitely the fucking perfect way to end this album. I think the title track Grand Morbid Funeral caps off this album brilliantly. Really does end on a high note, this one does. In at number five on the list, we have their second and final EP so far, Unblessing the Purity. You know as much as I do that I, I fucking love this era of bloodbath. But it's only got four songs. If this album, or this EP, had more than four songs, it would probably be number one. But the fact it's only got four really does let it down a tiny bit, much like Breeding Death, unfortunately. The EPs, though they are great and should be ranked among their full lengths, def and definitely is a shame that we don't get full length versions of these EPs, because it's like, shit, this sounds so good. So, there you go, what can you do? Blasting the Virgin Born explodes the EP in such a such an epic way, honestly. And then the transition from that song into Weaker Side is just mwah, pure chef's kiss. Also, Weaker Side is probably my favourite on the EP if I had to choose one. It's just so cool and just creepy. I know I say creepy for a lot of the songs in Blood Buff, but what else do I fucking call it, man? Six Salvation pounds your fucking eardrums at full pelt as well. And then Mouth of Empty Praise has cool, chuggy, downtrodden riffs just all the way through and is such a good way to close off this EP. But obviously, they, they close off the EP a bit too early. Four songs is not enough for me. What a good EP. All right, now, in a number four on the list, I'm surprised as much as you are that this album ranked so high above everything that came before it, but we have at number four, the arrow of Satan is drawn. If you asked me a year ago that I would rank this album at number four above everything that I've just discussed so far, I would call you crazy. This album was, for the longest time, my least favourite Bloodbath one, not because I didn't like it, because I liked all of them, but I felt like this one felt a bit generic on first listen, and second listen, and third listen. It took me, until preparing for this discography ranking, to rank them officially for, as, you know, preparation for the script for this video, when I realised, oh shit, there is a lot more to this album. So, I'm gonna go through and talk about this album for a bit, because this one deserves a bit of praise, I think. That's what most of this video is. There's barely any criticisms for any of these albums. This ranking is all arbitrary, to be honest. Any of these albums could be number one and I wouldn't pick a fight with you. All of Blood Buff's discography is great. Anyway, let's talk about this album in particular. I love that this album leans a tiny bit more into the black metal tones. It really does just hype up and just increase the atmosphere that they had on Grand Morbid Funeral up to 11 because I enjoyed the stuff in Grand Morbid Funeral a lot so I feel like them experimenting more with the black metal side of things with this album was just the perfect choice if they wanted to experiment more. But like I say, there are some Blood Bar fans out there, a lot of them probably, that didn't enjoy the experimentation that went on between Grand Morbid Funeral and this album, which makes sense, obviously. Which might be why this one ranks a bit lower for a few people, much like Grand Morbid Funeral. The black metal tones I've noticed is probably because of Joaquin Carlson, because Carlson was from a band called Craft, which is 
black metal, so he probably brought his pedigree over to death metal when they were making this album. He said, hey guys, what if we spritz in a little bit of a cool little black metal uh, atmosphere in here, really build up the creepiness and just disturbing nature of the album. Let's really try and amp that up a bit more. And um, it works, in my opinion. Which is why I'm a bit sad that, uh, that Joachim didn't stay longer in the band. I would have liked to see where else they could have gone with this direction. But, I'm, but I understand that he couldn't stay forever. The Swedish death metal tone I noticed that was on Resurrection Through Carnage makes a bit of a return on this album as well. Definitely some chainsaw guitars going on in this album that I haven't heard in Bloodbath since Resurrection Through Carnage, so I did enjoy that return. They didn't just go straight for full bore black metal and death metal fusion for this album. They did try to experiment elsewhere from their catalogue and merge it into their new direction they were going for in this one. Bleichmann, if that's how you pronounce the song title, is a heavy, groovy opening track for the album. Probably one of the best opening tracks of Blood Buff's catalogue. Blood Aside has a really evil, downtrodden tone to it that just makes it sound so epic. It, it sounds like the Devil's Anthem, not even meant to sound cringy there, it genuinely does. Wayward Samaritan has a, has a catchy riff that just gets in my head all the time. I just find myself humming it randomly. Levitator has a slow doom metal vibe to it as well, which I do enjoy as well. Levitator has a doom metal vibe to it, which I really enjoyed. And then Deader also has some really cool mood building in it. Also the riff in Morbid Antichrist is such a fucking earworm. And then Warhead Ritual is just straight back to that full energy pedal to the metal bloodbath shit that was so good on their earlier albums. Only the Dead Survive is just a heavy stomping song, honestly, that one's really good. And then Chainsaw Lullaby also has really cool mood building in it as well, but isn't the strongest way to end the album in my personal opinion, but it's still a solid song though. My one and only serious criticism with it is that the creative and funny slash fun song titles that the bloodbath was known for, you know, pre this album really, it's kind of missing. You don't have song titles like Year of the Cadaver Race in there that really kind of make you chuckle and then when you hear the song you're like, oh fuck yeah, this is great. But that's my only real criticism really with this one. This one's another really, really good one and it really took me by surprise when I enjoyed it so much in my marathoning of their albums in order leading up to recording this video. But yeah, great stuff. A number four hour of Shane has drawn. Now onto my top three. These top three albums you can switch around however order you want to be honest, they're, they're, all three of these albums are great. You can ask me what my top three bloodbath are tomorrow and it'll be in a completely different order. It just depends on the day and what mood I'm in. But for right now, the ranking is as follows. At number three, we have The Fathomless Mastery. Now this might piss off a few people because I know this is a lot of people's favorite albums, but The Fathomless Mastery is amazing for a few reasons. Here are some of the reasons. This is Michael Acrofelt's best death growl vocal work he's ever done in his career. No cap, can't believe I said no cap on ironically there. The whole album is just massive and monstrous in tone. It's just, yeah, from the vocals to the guitars to the production, it just all hits the mark perfectly. Just creates some severe blistering death metal. At the behest of their death is straight back to that ferocious bone crunching, just blast beat, full pelt bullet train aggression that I just love about this band so much. And the process of disillumination might be my favorite on the album. It's so energetic and just horrifying in tone. It's really, really good stuff. Slaughtering the Will to Live is heavy, heart thumping and just with dense riffs, honestly. Mock the Cross is slow and deliberate. Treasonous has a slow tempo chorus with a creepy guitar tone. And then the song goes and speeds up for the bridge and rhythm sections. That's such a layered song, so good. Drink from the Cup of Heresy and Devouring the Feeble are just two absolute chuggathons. Martin Axenrot's drums on Aesos play on the offbeat, which really creates an unease in its tone that really, really works for the song. And of course, Hades Rising is such an absolute fucking monster of a song. With atmosphere building and slow intense riffs, that song will just make your fucking skin crawl, dude. Also, I like Wretched Human Mirror, but it should have swapped places with Hades Rising. Hades Rising should have been the closer for this album, man. I feel like if that happened, this album would literally be spotless. It would be perfect. It practically is. I feel like it's just 
the song order should have been swapped a bit. That's the only thing I can think of to complain about this album for, which is mad. It shows how good it is. But yeah, The Fathomless Mastery, number three. Now moving on to number two. Now, though the placing of this album might shock a few people, it didn't shock me. When this album came out, I fucking spammed it. I still am spamming it. We have at number two, Survival of the Sickest. It might be recency bias. I'll admit, it might be, but I don't care. I love this album too much to give a shit if if people think this album's overrated or whatever. I mean, hell, I've got it as my screensaver on my phone. What do you want from me? This entire album is just pure, disgusting, sour lemon stank face throughout the whole thing. It's just so evil and gruesome. Definitely the best album with Nick Holmes as vocalist, and with it being their latest album, like I say, recent bi recency bias, I meant to say, might be at play here, but there are just too many fucking tracks on here that I'm still spamming to this day. I'm pretty sure that my Spotify rap this year will just consist of every song from this album. I, I'll, I'll put money on that. In the time between recording and editing this video, Spotify Wrapped has come out, and wouldn't you know it, I was correct. Every single song from this new album from Bloodbath has indeed ended up on my end of year top 100 songs. Also, to add more bragging rights to that, Bloodbath was my number one most played artist of the year, and so I went on Twitter and thanked them for that, and wouldn't you know it, they liked my tweet. How nice is that? Anyway, let's resume the video, shall we? To be honest, this whole album is just all killer no filler. And after the band's four year hiatus, they bring it back with Zombie Inferno, the first track. And my god, what a monster of a song. Putrefying Corpse has just some real speed and aggression to it. And Barney Greenway's guest vocals just fit perfectly on that song. Dead Parade is slow and chuggy and has elements of doom metal in it. Malignant Maggot Therapy is just gore metal at its finest, and I'd put money on the fact that this album is pretty much just a tribute to Cannibal Corpse. Let's be honest, it is. And that's okay, we all love Cannibal Corpse here, don't we? Luke Lemay's backing vocals on Carved and Burn Infernal as well are really, really well placed. His vocals really do help layer out the sound and add extra ferocity to the background growling that goes on throughout those two songs. To Die has a bouncy chorus that then descends into a slow, creepy rhythm. It's just so good, dude. Affliction of Extinction has a really cool crawling lead that just gets stuck in my head all the time. Tales of Melting Flesh is also just really fast and angry. And then Environ Side is just pure evil chaos as a song. And then by far my favorite track on this album and probably my favorite track of Bloodbath, if not maybe my second or third favorite. It is No God Before Me, the best closer I think that I've ever heard on any album ever. It's definitely up there. It is the single most evil sounding song I have heard in a very, very long time. Also, it's safe to say that if you hear church bells in a death metal song, you could bet your money that they're not worshipping Jesus Christ in there. They're praising something else. But yeah, Survival of the Sickest comes in number two. I love it so much, and I'm sorry if you don't like it as much as me, but what can you do? You can't please everybody, can you? And then obviously, you figured it out by now, number one, my absolute favourite Blood Buff album of all time, it probably always will be, Nightmares Made Flesh. This might be my single favourite death metal album, in fact, it definitively is, and is my, in my definitely in my top five favourite albums of all time, at the very least, I have to have a long, hard think about what my top five albums are. But it's definitely up there, dude. It's such a good album. Let's go through it, shall we? Despite it being the longest album of their discography, ranking it at 12 songs, I never ever want it to end. And if I listen to one song on the album, I'll end up having to listen to the rest on the album because I'm like, oh shit, yeah, well we got, if I'm listening to Year of the Cadaver Race, for example, I'll want, ah shit, well I've got The Ascension next, well listen to that and then I'll stop. Oh no, but it's draped in disease after that, oh god. Peter Tagdrin steps in for one album, this album, for vocals, and his visceral, guttural vocals really, really fit the bloodbath style. And he feels right at home immediately on this album. And I really would like him to come back and do vocal work for Bloodbuff again, to be honest, even if it is just backing vocals on their next album, I'd love him to come back. Also, I'm a Hypocrisy fan as well, which obviously helps. Cancer of the Soul is heavy and is definitely the most sensible way to open this album with. Brave New Hell has a catchy, downtrodden riff to it, 
that's another good one. And Soul Evisceration has an energetic, vicious tone to it as well. And then my favourite track on the album, and debatably one of my favourite songs of all time, Outnumbering the Day. What a fucking barn burner of a song, dude. Has such a chaotic melody to it, and I can't sing the praises of this song in particular enough, honestly. This whole album's great, but this song is like the magnum opus of Nightmares Made Flesh, to be honest. I love Outnumbering the Day. Feeding the Undead has this breakneck pace to it that just never stops. Eaten is obviously a slow and heavy song, and as a song, it is probably a landmark song in the entire death metal genre. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. And if it isn't, it should be. Bastard Son of God and Year of the Cadaver Race are two fast, chuggy songs that are so fucking good. And then the transition from Year of the Cadaver Race to Ascension is so cool and creepy and really leads into The Ascension, which is another fucking great slow-paced song so well. The atmosphere on that track is just killer. I love the descending lead in the song Draped in Disease as well, another really, really good one. And then Blood Vortex is a really cool experimental song and is a very sensible way, much like Cancer of the Soul, to close off the album. Great stuff. Great stuff all around. What a great album. But there you go. That's the entire ranking. I'll list them off again for you. In 8th place, Breeding Death. Number 7, Resurrection Through Carnage. Number 6, Grand Morbid Funeral. Number 5, Embracing the Purity. Number 4, Arrow of Satan is Drawn. Number 3, Fathomless Mastery. Number 2, Survival of the Sickest. And number 1, Nightmares Made Flesh. But there you go. Oh, my phone didn't break. Hope you guys have enjoyed this discography ranking. Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? That's fine, we're all entitled to opinion. If you want to put your ranking in the comments, please do. I'm very, very interested to what order you put these albums in. But obviously, like I said, there's no weak album or record or EP in this band's entire discography. They really do put the super back into super group. They are just unsung heroes of the death metal genre. That's me ranking. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and yeah. Guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.